Hello and welcome to the session in, in which we would look at the application of the discounted cash flow. We're going to look at three different cases. The first case we're going to be look at is a cost cutting proposal. Then we're going to look at how do we submit a competitive bid using discounted cash flow. And the third case we're going to work with is choosing between equipment options with different economic life. And all of those we're going to be using DCF discounted cash flow valuation to make a decision. So let's go ahead and get started with our first application of the discounted cash flow and that's evaluating cost cutting proposal okay so for example and when do we use cost cutting proposal basically the, the company maybe want to automate so they want to put maybe a new machinery and they want to know if it's really worth putting that new machine so what do they do they will do a discounted cash flow proposal to find out if it's worth it okay let's go ahead and do that Suppose we are considering, suppose we are considering um, autom automating, um, automating some part of our existing production process. The necessary equipment is 80,000. Would that be relevant cost? Of course, that's going to be a relevant cost of 80,000. The automation will save us 20,000. So as a result, expenses will go down by, sorry, 22,000 by reducing labor and material. For simplicity, assume that the equipment have a five-year life and, the depreciated, and is depreciated to zero on a straight line basis. So basically, we're going to take 80,000 divided by five, five, which is five years. Let's look at it. 80,000 divided by five. And every year, we're going to have a $16,000 depreciation. That's also relevant to us because remember what we learned in the prior session. Depreciation is a tax shield. And we're going to see how is that going to help us. But depreciation also will increase our expenses too. It will be actually, and uh, in five years, the equipment will be worth 20,000. So, should we automate? The tax rate is 34% and the discount rate is 10%. So, the question is, should we automate? Okay. So, the first thing is to do is to identify what we called, if you remember, the relevant incremental cash flow for this project. Let's start to see what are the relevant incremental cash flow. Well, the first one is cost cost it's going to be negative 80,000 the after-tax salvage value is 20,000 times 1 minus 0.34 all right what are we talking about here remember after five years what can we do after five years so after five years we are told after five years we can sell the asset for 20,000 Okay, that's fine. But remember, we are also told that when we sell it, it's going to be fully depreciated. Therefore, the book value is equal to zero. What is the book value? It's the cost minus accumulated depreciation. The cost is 80,000. And over five years, we had depreciation of 80,000. Therefore, the book value equal to zero. Therefore, what we do is we have a gain of 20,000. And remember what we have to do with the gain. If we have a gain, we have to pay taxes on the gain. Therefore, we have to pay 0.34 of taxes on the gain. And that's $6,800 in taxes. Well, if that's if I have to pay 6800 it means I received 20000 Then I have to pay 6800 What's left for me is 13200 So this is my cash flow. This is my cash flow. So what else I'm going to get? I'm going to get 13200 when I sell this asset. So that's relevant. Operating cash flow are the third component to consider, which are those are the biggest one because they're going to happen year after year. Buying the new equipment affect our operating cash flow in two ways. Why two ways? First, we save 22000 before taxes every year. So our expenses go down by 22000 22,000. In other words, the firm operating income increased by 22,000. So what's going to happen? Because expenses will go down by 22,000, 22, not 20,000, by 22,000. As a result, net income will go up by 22,000. That's the that's the good news. The bad news is not the bad news. What's going to happen too? Because we have this equipment, we're going to have depreciation of 16,000. So what's that going to do? So expenses will go up by 16,000. Therefore, it reduces net income by 16,000. Okay, so 
an increase in net income by 16,000, a reduction in income by 16,000. What's the net? What's the net between those two? The net is an increase of 6,000 in net income. So basically, not net income, sorry, EBIT to be more specific, EBIT. EBIT of 6,000. So because the project has an operating income of 22,000, which is the saving and a depreciation of six, overall, this will increase EBIT by 6,000. So this, so this is the project EBIT. So we're going to consider this is the project EBIT. The incremental increase. Remember, the incremental increase in cash. Now, basically, we're going to take the information that we learned to calculate the operating cash flow. So how do we calculate the operating cash flow? One way to look at it is take a look at EBIT, the changes in EBIT, which has happened to be $6,000, plus the appreciation expense, which is $16,000, minus taxes of 2040. How did we come up with the taxes? Easy. If, if our income is going to increase by 6000 remember our income will increase an additional 6000 If we increase our income by 6000 we have to pay 34% of that, which is 2040 And this is where the tax is coming from. So EBIT plus depreciation minus taxes gives us operating cash flow. So the after-tax operating cash flow overall is 19960 Okay. Now, is there another way to solve this problem? Yes, there is. I mean, we learned those different ways in the right in the prior session. So, so let's take a look at this exercise from a different from a different uh, angle. It might be somewhat more enlightening to calculate operating cash flow using a different approach. What's actually going on going on here is very simple. First, we have a cost saving increase uh, increases our pre tax income by twenty two thousand. So, what's going to happen? Our income will go up. Our income is going to go up by 22,000. We have to pay taxes on this amount. So we have to pay 34%. So we have to pay 7,000. So times 34%. We have to pay 7,480 in taxes on this income. In other words, the, the 2000, 22,000 pre tax saving, what's the net? Of saving is 14,452. To, to come up with this figure, also you can take 22,000 times 0.66. What you're going to be left with is 14,520. And what's 0.66? 1 minus 0.34, 1 minus your tax rate. So this is this is how much you're going to keep from the savings. Second, the extra 16,000 in depreciation is not really cash flow. Obviously, this is what we learn about depreciation. It's a tax shield. Therefore, from the depreciation multiplied by the tax rate, that's going to give us another inflow of cash of 5,440 because this was a tax shield, 16,000 times 0.34. So simply put, we're going to have an increase in our cash flow because we reduced our expenses and the net increase, net of taxes, 14,520. Plus, we're going to have the tax shield savings of 54.40. So the total, the total cash flow per year from this project is 19,960. Okay. So simply put, if you really want to take a look at this project overall, at year zero you have to come up with 80,000 negative. Then every year you're going to get 19,960, 19,960, 19,960. Except the last year you're going to sell the asset, and this amount is gain net of taxes. Because you're going to have a gain of 20000 but you're going to have to pay taxes. What you're left with is 13200 Now you have the outflow and you have the inflow. All what you have to do now is discount them using 10%. And if you discount them using 10%, you're going to get an MPV of 3860 And as a result, this project will be a go. This project will be a go. So this is one use of discounted cash flow. Another use of discounted cash flow is basically uh, to buy or not to buy an item. You could you, you could read this example in your textbook. So basically, you could you could you could just go ahead and since you have it in your textbook, you can read this example. The next the next um, the next example I will work with is setting the bid price. So another another usage of discounted cash flow is to set the bid price on a project. If you have any questions, by all means, email me.